Ahoy hoy, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to do a reaction to an uh, SCP animated channel, which a lot of people have been asking me to do this. Today, we're going to react to SCP-4793, Steel, which I, I looked this up and that is definitely how you pronounce that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to lead off with the proper credits. This video that I'm reacting to is SCP-4793 Steel by The Rubber. Um, it is under a Creative Commons share like 3.0 license. That's the wrong license because the article you're deriving from, yeah. Uh, this video, it says his credits say this video being derived from the article link is released under a Creative Commons share like 3.0 license. But the original article is under a Creative Commons sh attribution share alike 3.0 license. You can't leave the attribution element out of your uh, license declaration. It's necessary. That's weird. I don't know what that's the second channel I've seen doing this. Huh. The original article, because this is going to, I mean, I don't necessarily have to because I'm reacting to somebody else. So technically there it's a, it's a, it should be a series of links, but since they, I, I'm just going to do it anyway, who cares? SCP-4793 was written by Dyslexion uh, on the 15th of November, 2019. You can find it at HTTP colon forward slash forward slash SCP dash wiki dot wiki dot dot com forward slash SCP dash four seven nine three. Uh, and if you have problems remembering that link name, don't worry, it's in the description. So I read the whole article. The article is 16,000 words long, roughly. It's 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 long and I didn't like it. I actually downvoted it, but it's it's got a lot of it's got a lot of good things going for it. It's just got also got a lot of bad things going for it. In fact, the link, I think, works against it in that respect. Um, it's just there's just too much stuff that's it's just doesn't work for me, basically. Anyway, uh, <laughs> too much stuff that doesn't work for me. Uh, that's so that's that's just true of the SCP wiki in general. All right, let's get started. Viewer discretion is advised. An XO6 jumps on shore. She pushes her arm into its throat as it starts to claw at her. She pulls a knife from her belt and stabs it three times in the neck before shoving it off. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-4793. SCP I'm gonna pause periodically throughout the video to give you my comments, but otherwise I'll let the video play. P4793 is a male human dressed in a traditional armor of a Spartan hop. Dr dressed in a traditional armor? You mean the? That's sorry, that's a little tiny problem. Light during the Golden Age of Greece. 4793 appears to be in his late 20s and has been confirmed. During the Golden, I think you mean from the Golden Age of Greece since he is now in the current age. Confirmed to be of Greek descent. 4793 has demonstrated heightened cellular reproduction within his body. If injured, the fibroblast found within him will produce collagen at an extremely accelerated rate, usually closing the wound within two minutes. Oh, they're just skipping it. So they're skipping over a lot of pseudoscience here that's not necessary, to be honest with you. And uh, a, a single plot point that doesn't come up for the rest of the video, or I should say the rest of the story, even on the actual article, which is... Uh, that when he heals, if he doesn't receive additional injuries, the, the healing will just continue past the point where he's already healthy and cause like tumors and stuff to form. That's left out of this, it, it appears, and probably for the best because it's not important to the story at all and is sort of useless in the article. 4793 was discovered by the Foundation in an exploration to a mountain cave, identified as SCP-4793-A in the south of Greece. 4793 is the entity that emerged from the relief carving on 4793A. After the discovery, 4793 was... After the dis... There's incredibly plot important stuff that just happened that they just skipped over. The Chaos Insurgency finds the guy and are cartoonishly evil about it. Like, one guy almost says... I don't know if he says exactly this, but something along the lines of, I like hurting people, so let's hurt this guy. Uh, whilst he's going, I don't want to hurt you. I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I, I'm a warrior, but I don't want to be a warrior. Please don't make me hurt you. And then he knocks them all unconscious immediately. 
and the SCP Foundation just so happens to be there at the time. Uh, I'm rolling my eyes at that particular plot point, but they just so happen to be there at the right time and uh, capture him by basically throwing their weapons down and having a negotiation. The problem is, is that what is it? I'm with the foundation. I'm here to we help people or something like that uh, is like a line of serious importance later on in the story. I don't know. Well, maybe they're changing the story up enough that they won't need to have that for the callback later. But all right. Was transported to site 20. In the Foundation, Director Jack Hargraves engaged in a series of program assessments and tests to explore the combat capabilities of 4793 with the hopes of adding him into MTF Alpha 9. Alpha 9 is the uh, Resurrection Cannon's version of, uh, like, a 7, I think it is. But the old, uh, an MTF made up of SCPs, uh, which, it's funny, because this guy is essentially a spiritual rewrite of Abel, okay? Uh, and Abel was in Omega-7, and he, the reason why Omega-7 doesn't exist anymore is because he killed everybody. 4793 performed exceedingly well against Captain Holly Shore. While initially requiring motivation, 4793 engaged Holly and started to cooperate in the exercise, especially when presented with a threat to Captain Shore's life. So this is sort of skipped over, but Hargraves is running like a weapons program here. Uh, and he is also cartoonishly evil. A lot of the bad guys in this are just car like caricatures rather than characters. Um, Hargraves attaches explosives to them, to him. I should say Hargraves attaches explosives to 4793 during the first sparring session with Holly and, uh, uh, and says he'll explode them if uh, he doesn't fight back. And 4793 being... Uh, sort of peaceful and not wanting to fight uh, refuses at first uh, especially considering the fact that he can regenerate anyway until he realizes that the point of it isn't to hurt him it's to hurt Holly Cargraves has put the explosives in there so that there's a threat to Holly's life which is again more caricature than character but here, here we are also I don't think he's telling the truth about it he's like I would never really do that but you know Director Jack Hargraves has assigned Captain Shore to work with 47... Oh, also at the bottom of this, you can just barely tell. I know that this is probably a character design choice, but why can I see her midriff in her full body armor? Feels like, um, yeah, feels like a bad choice. Seven nine three on a weekly basis to establish a connection that can be utilized if needed. On the 28th of December, 2018, while 4793 and Shore were doing their usual training, a massive avian creature no So they just skipped over Hargrave's weapons program. Just skipped over the whole thing. Like that 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 creates these monsters. Okay, all right. Known as X06 breached from its containment and broke into site 20. One of them tried to attack Shore, but was shot by 4793. It then flew away through a ventilation shaft. Sure, and MTF up. By the way, this doesn't have to match up with the article. I'm not saying it does. They can do their own adaptations. That makes sense. It's a good idea. But if they're going to do adaptations, I'm going to criticize their story based on their story, not what they're pulling from the article. So they're like, I don't know, man. Psyllian 11. They're setting themselves up for a lot of problems later on in the story because there's a lot of important like character moments. I'll see how it goes. We're sent out to kill the creature. You could have died. I can't let that happen. 4793 insisted on following. Shore descended the staircase and paused briefly at the door before opening it. The bodies of several creatures similar to X06 could be seen lying in front of it, as well as several corpses clad in orange jumpsuits. The hallway was clear, but a barricade made of chairs and tables sat at the end. Shore. Okay. He did mention Eps Epsilon, uh, the MTF. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. They're the ones who, first of all, recovered him. And they're also the MTF that's currently, like, that Holly is part of, because Holly's the first person that talked to him. Uh, Zimmerman is a member of that MTF, but he has just apparated from nowhere. Like, they talked about the MTF existing and how they're, like, going down here and that he's coming with them, but they're only showing Holly and him. And I know that this is probably an animation thing, so I'm willing to give it a little bit of a pass. But if you're going to do that, why show Zimmerman at all, I guess? 
4793. Maybe he has an Zimmer important part to play later on. Climb the barricade. As they turn the corner. Hey, how come Zimmerman's midriff isn't showing? And hid behind makeshift saying. barriers. A mixture of D-class and security officers could be seen. Pausing for a moment, Shore turned to 4793. When we send the D-class up, you're going with them. What about you and Zimmerman? Shouldn't you wait for backup? What backup? By the time another MTF shows up, it'll be too late. We need to blow the reactor. But that's suicide. This isn't about what I want anymore. If I don't fight, a lot more people are gonna get killed. Then I'm coming with you. No. Dying, I can deal with. Watching you lose yourself, I can't. You didn't... You... You, you didn't include that plot element. Him losing himself is something you left out, which is fine, but you can't reference back. So, he doesn't remember who he is, but he remembers, like, little bits and pieces from here and there, and he doesn't like the person he was before, but he remembers those bits and pieces when he gets into combat. So what she's saying here is, I don't want you to go down here and fight these things, because you might lose yourself and become that person you don't want to be. There's a whole, like, a whole thing behind it that they don't include, so this line doesn't make any sense. Captain Shore turned away and walked towards a security officer. What's the fastest way out of here? The freight elevator. The freight elevator? So there's only one? Vader. Well, why? Or at least one in this scene, at the very least, uh, unless they go somewhere else. Haven't you used it? We don't have cards for it. If a D-Class got one, yeah, I get it. But my card works. So we're getting out of here now. A cheer went up from the assembled personnel. A ding was heard, and the freight elevator doors opened. The crowd of D-Class pushed inside, accompanied by several security officers. Get as far from this site as you can. It's gonna get hot in here soon. The doors closed, leaving only the MTF, 15 D-Class, and SCP-4793 in the block. Several... Wait, they're waiting? So there is just one elevator. ...minutes passed as the cable continued to reverberate. Several of the D-Class began to fidget. The cable snapped and the elevator plummeted down the shaft. After a... Hold on. I'm going to say this again. I say this a lot and I'm really starting to like... It's really starting to build up. If, if there's only one elevator in this scene... I mean, maybe they go somewhere else. Maybe that'll work. They have to, they have to really like move locations so they can't just go down the hall. There has to be another elevator. The elevator is broken. It will not work anymore. You cut the cable on an elevator, It's that's it. It's done. A few seconds, X06s begin to flood the room, attacking from the elevator shaft in the sides. The D-Class and MTF members opened fire. There's plot important points, but the elevator has come, becomes important later. Fire. Shore fires at several X06s and turns on another when her gun emits a click. She drew her handgun and started moving back towards the door to the office. Four X-06 crawlers begin to move towards her. She terminated two of them before tripping on an unknown obstacle. Holly! An X-06 jumped on shore, and she pushed her arm into its throat as it started to claw at her. She pulled a knife from her belt and stabbed it three times in the neck before shoving it off. An unknown force dragged shore backward. Shore was pulled closer to the office door. The office it's door me. that no one stopped fighting. Hold on, hold on. Oh, there's so many things here. First of all, they have abandoned the narrative conceit from the actual article itself, but kept a lot of the content. The narrative conceit is is that you're this part of the video or this part of the story is being viewed from Holly's, sorry, Holly's body camera. So if you if you abandon that part of the conceit, then I don't know why she's tripping over an unknown object. The idea is that, you know, she she's going backwards and trips over something. She can't see what it is. The viewer can't see what it is because it's part of the body camera, right? So it's an unknown object. But in this version of the story, it's not unknown. You showed me what it was. It was a rock. <sighs> Ace and I... Wait, hold on. Let's, let's play that again. It's pulled closer to the office door. It's me. Stop fighting. Okay, so they left out the part where she's flailing and trying to stop whatever's pulling her back because she doesn't know what it is, uh, which sets up, it's me, stop fighting. It's me, stop fighting. Okay. Ace and I are going to blow the reactor. You won't make it there. 
Oh, the, also Zimmerman's name is Ace, in case you didn't know. That's from the article, but okay. The hand of an X062 reached up and grabbed onto the leg of a D-Class personnel. He looked down at it, let out a swear, and was pulled off his feet into the elevator shaft. Zimmerman dove and grabbed his hand. He managed to hold the personnel for a few seconds before being dragged into the shaft himself. Zimmer so Zimmerman wasn't important to the plot and could have been left out entirely. 4793 grabbed Shore and pulled her into the office, slamming the door behind them. You can't save them. I have to kill all of these damn things. No, Holly. Remember the first thing you said to me? What? No. We're the foundation. We keep people safe. <gasps> They called back to a thing that they didn't show. <laughs> That's a callback to a line that they don't have in their version of the story. Oh my god. Oh wow. That's, that's, uh, wow. Okay. Okay. Here's people. Keep them safe. I'm sorry, that's... 4793 uh, pushed Holly, and she stumbled into the elevator. What elevator? <laughs> what? The elevator's broken! You went into an office, and then you what, come back out? It's the same hallway in the same elevator. It's broken. <sighs> now it's starting to fall apart. I knew it would fall apart right around now, and here it is. Hold her. Don't let her out. Several D-Class grabbed Captain Shore and held her. SCP-4793 turned back to look at Captain Shore as the elevator doors closed. No! I'm sorry. Sorry, that line reading was great. I, I mean, the, 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 the voice actor is doing his best with what he's got here, but that no! I mean, how, how else can you deliver it, I guess, but still. 4793 was sitting against a wall, with his sword and shield sitting to the side. He picked up a camera mounted on a combat helmet. Hey, Holly. I hope this message gets to you. Somehow. It's been about two hours. Okay, hold on. Are they implying that he threw Holly into the elevator and then sat down against a wall for two hours? I mean, it feels very much like that's what they're implying. They, I mean, there could have been stuff that happened in between, but they make absolutely zero indication that anything happened between. He's just sitting and waiting. For two hours. Hours since I last saw you. I hope it isn't the last. I don't know what to say. So Which, by the way, during that two hours on the actual article, there's a whole bunch of plot that happens that's, again, going to be relevant later. And it's starting to look like they're going to call back to it. It doesn't it, it, call back to a thing that didn't happen in their version of the story. But let's so see. much to say. So little time. I was born to a farmer and grew into a warrior. I battled Ares to a standstill. I won wars single-handedly. Then I met my wife. We were set to claim the world. Two immortals who wanted to bring a chaotic world some semblance of peace. And then Ares killed her. Because he was in love with 4793, by the way. Uh, 4793, there's a whole backstory to that, too. Uh, the, the wife is from the Scottish Highlands. Uh, she came down there to say hello, I guess, and fought and fight the greatest fighter in the world and uh, did so well that he fell in love with her because apparently combat's all this guy cares about. But prior to that, the guy had also fought Ares to a standstill and Ares fell in love with him. So, okay. I lost everything. And now I'm here, alone, adrift, a stranger surrounded by even stranger things. But within you, I see the spark I saw in her. A burning desire to make the world better. It makes me want to be better. And I don't know if you feel the same, or whether I'll get out of here. But I will fight for you. Die if I have to. I love you. Suddenly, a voice came from above where 4793 was sitting. Welcome, Androcles. Did you know there's another Androcles? A Roman. But I digress. He plucked the thorn out of a lion's paw. Years later, when he was thrown into the arena by a cruel Caesar, the lion recognized him and spared his life. No. Why are you telling me this? I am the lion. You saved my father. So I will grant you this boon. You saved my father. 
okay. So there's a whole bunch of plot that happened in that two hours that they skipped over, and now they're <laughs> they're calling back to it. Um, uh, Hargrave. It, Hargrave created these things. They consider Hargrave their father. Um, he runs into Hargrave while he's fighting his way through the site and then spares his life. It's supposed to be this important moment, this important character moment, which they've completely ignored, um, where he forgives someone and lets them live. And then these guys are supposed to be like, and because of that, we're letting you leave because they consider him their father. So letting Hargrave, sur- giving, mer- having mercy to Hargrave uh, earns their respect, except they didn't include that. So this whole story doesn't mean anything leave now and none of us will harm you i know you i'm really bothered by this because like they could have created a consistent and coherent narrative but everything in this is like uh, it's incoherent it's a bunch of stuff strung together it's a bunch of lines pulled directly from the article in certain places and then changed in other places and parts are left out with no concern for how it affects the overall story. And you have a loved one up above. And it's the number one search return for SCP. So great, I guess. This is what SCP has become on YouTube. What? So you can kill everyone? Like, not every SCP article is great, by the way. In fact, I, like I said, I downloaded this one, and I think it has some serious flaws, but, like, this is much worse. This takes the good, this, like, leaves out a lot of the good stuff. Like, the callbacks are fun, right? Like, you say a thing, and then later in the story, that thing comes back, and you're like, aha! Your brain has that aha moment, but this leaves those out completely, and just focuses on, but still does the payoff moments without setting them up kill my short-sighted brother we don't wish to kill anyone as our father proclaimed we will roam the earth seeking and capturing the anomalous why did you call me brother our father used your blood to create us it holds the power that allows us to multiply with such ease to grow as fast as we do we are brothers in everything but name i can't let you leave here not after seeing this how will you stop me by sacrificing yourself by losing yourself bit by bit as you track us all down. Except the losing your, like, yeah, sacrificing yourself is one thing. That part, you can leave that in because that's just de- like, oh, they we're deadly. We'll kill you. But the losing yourself bit by bit part, you didn't cover that in your version of the story. He's not going to lose himself. Now? Because he's not, like, worried about ga- regaining all of his memories and turning into the monster warrior guy anymore. SCP-4793 punched no. the wall and removed a section of re- So this is at the story oh, bar with a piece of concrete. This is in the story. They did it again. Read at the end. Instantly. They forgot where they were in the scene. Okay, so this is something that hasn't even been covered yet. 4793, when he touches things that could be considered, it's it's hard to explain exactly what it is, but considered weapons or armor turns it into a version of a weapon or armor that you can use, like a sword or a shield or, or a breastplate and so on. So he's reaching into the wall and grabbing the sword, right? But, and we're going to scroll back real quick here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, see this? He already has a sword and a shield. He didn't need to reach into the wall. This is the same scene. Nothing has changed. So in this scene, he's sitting here. He records his message, and then he looks up and has this conversation with the creature. And then the creature comes down, and he reaches into the wall and grabs a new sword. There's no... Yeah. And removed a section of rebar with a piece of concrete at the end. There's no... Instantly, yeah. it transformed into a concrete great sword. I know who I am. I am Androcles, oh my God. beloved of Ares. Warrior of Greece, but I am also Androcles, the protector and friend. I know who I am, and nothing will change this. The central facility of Site 20 was destroyed in a nuclear explosion of unknown magnitude. In the reactor room, no trace of SCP 4793 was discovered. So, and this is a problem with uh, both the article and with the video here. So I'm not going to blame it on necessarily just the video, but um, so the explosion is enough to uh, completely destroy 4793, but apparently not the camera on his head. 
I don't know how that works, nor the cameras of several other uh, individuals, but also is enough to, to kill off all of the entities inside the site as well. It makes no sense, actually. I mean, they could have made it make sense, but just saying that it, it transmitted the images while they were being recorded in like a live stream sort of situation. But they don't. They just find the recordings afterwards, somehow surviving a nuclear explosion. And by the way, it's a nuclear reactor. Let me tell you something about nuclear reactors. They're designed not to explode. Like, and even when they do explode, the problem is mostly fire and or radiation spread, not the kind of explosion we're talking about where they like incinerate and or um, what's the word? Uh, actually, incinerate is pretty good. Vaporize where they vaporize things like you're not going to get that out of a nuclear reactor, even if you know what you're doing. And he didn't. I, I don't know how the explosion happens, either in the story, on the article or in this video. So anyway, that's it. I, hmm, I'm starting to see some of the major problems with these things, but they, they could be fixed. It's just just bad writing, or I should say bad adaptation. If the, well, it's not even bad. It needs to be tightened up considerably. This is not a finished product script. This is the script for this video that they put out does not feel finished. And it does not feel like it has been like worked on in any serious way. And I am sorry to whoever wrote it and whoever did the adaptation, but you need to do a better job. If you're going to call back to a thing that have like, you don't have to stick to the article, but adapt the story. Oh man, just adapt the story properly. Now uh, I'm going to say this is separate from that. <laughs> I know a lot of these animation channels are having problems with uh, art tracing and just straight up art theft of SCP content. Uh, without the realization that SCP content is also, even if it's art, is also under a Creative Commons share alike uh, attribution 3.0 license. <laughs> so um, if you see something in this video from their video that is not either not credited properly on their video or just straight up was stolen, uh, let me know so that I can at least credit you properly in my video. And uh, my apologies, but Jesus. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more of this kind of content, let me know in the comments down below and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday.